<laughs> hey, how's everyone doing? Jared here. So if you got 20 bucks to spend, I think I got some neat stuff to show you. So I wanted to start out with a simple snap screen protectors. Now I know most of you are like, dude, screen protectors, really? No, seriously, they're actually pretty cool because they come with an alignment guide, a little plastic shield that goes around your phone and you just kind of snap it into place and the alignment is supposed to be perfect. So I wanted to try this out with you guys on camera. Let's see if this is the real deal. So we've got three here for my iPhone 7 Plus. Uh, we've got the privacy guard tempered glass, we've got the standard tempered glass, and we've got the edge to edge tempered glass with the black bezel so it kind of all like blends in nicely together. And side note, these do come with a lifetime warranty, but I wasn't able to find any information out on their website about their sort of terms and conditions surrounding the warranty, so. So maybe let's start it with the privacy tempered glass first. So step one, clean the display. Oh yeah, get in there. You're a dirty girl. Get in your little belly button there. All right, that looks pretty damn clean to me. Let's get on with it. All right, so we're supposed to go like this, so it faces the bottom so that dust doesn't float on top of it. We line it up, that's pretty easy, and then we just push down, like that. Okay, so now I'm supposed to peel off the top layer here. Squeegee, little bit of squeegeeing. What? That is perfect alignment. I, I like that, that's pretty sick. All right, so let's check out the privacy feature. Check that out, see if you guys can make it out. So start turning it and it starts disappearing, right? Cool, huh? So there you go, perfect way to apply your screen protectors, perfect every time. Uh, 9H hardness, they're tempered glass, you've got a privacy one, an edge to edge one, and a standard one. Um, I did notice that unfortunately they only support Apple and Samsung devices at the moment, but if you got one of those phones, go check them out, link will be in the description below. And while I got the phone out, I may as well show you guys the next product. This is the Toddy Gear Wedge, it's a smartphone slash tablet stand, and because it's sort of a beanbag design, uh, it can contour to lots of different surfaces. Uh, the materials can come in lots of different patterns or colors if you want, and on the bottom, the reverse side, it actually has a microfiber cloth so that if your phone's a little bit dirty, clean off the screen, flip her around, and you've now got yourself a smartphone stand. Cool, I like it, but I mean, that's about all there is to it, so moving on. Next up is the Easy SMX Combatter Wing Gaming Mouse, or maybe it's the G10 as it states on the box. Now I gotta come clean with you guys about something. This is $22, not under 20, but I mean, I'm not gonna fit it in a Best Tech under 50 video. Come on, it's only $2 more, you cheapskates. So looking at the design, it is a pretty aggressive looking gaming mouse, uh, and some parts kind of make you think that you can make some small adjustments. Uh, they don't, I found out the hard way. I broke one of the plastic clips off the side. It does have a non-slip rubber coating over top of the plastic bits. We're looking at a five foot long fabric braided cable. Uh, it's also got some breathing LEDs in it, so that's kind of cool. And we've also got 10 programmable buttons all around this sucker, which you can actually do macro recording with with the included software that comes in the box. Now this has got a cool little feature where you can change the DPI on the fly. And as you go through the different DPI settings, uh, the LED colors will actually change to indicate that. So for instance, red is 500 DPI, green is 1250 DPI, blue is is 2000 DPI and white is 4000 DPI. It's a lot of DPI. Now using this guy in games, I actually found it to be pretty darn comfortable and even better, I loved the grip that it provides because it's got these little wings that are on the sides of the right and left click buttons. Anyways, like I mentioned, 22 bucks, link for this guy will be in the description below. <laughs> okay, next up is something I probably should have included in a video several months back when it was still cold, but it's Canada here and it still gets cold and I'm sure some of you guys are in areas that still get cold as well. This is a 5200 milliamp hour rechargeable hand warmer. I've been wanting one of these for so long. Okay, so we've got an aluminum shell on the top here. We've got a power button along with three battery LED indicator lights. Uh, we've got a charging output, five volt, one amp, and of course our input charging port. Right next to that though is a little flashlight. If you press the power button twice, it turns on, and if you press it three times, it turns into SOS mode. However handy that would be. Now on the side here, we've got a switch that goes from off to low temperature and high temperature. Low temperature is between 42 and 44 degrees Celsius. For my American friends, that's between 107 and 111 degrees Fahrenheit. And the high setting goes between 47 and 49 degrees Celsius. So 116 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I love about this is that it heats up instantly. Like within 10 seconds, it's at max heat and it's awesome. Now one thing I thought was cool is that you can actually daisy chain this if you want to another battery pack. That way you could have heat for days. Now for only 18 bucks, if you live in a cold place like I do, this thing's worth its weight in gold. Link for this guy and those other links will be in the description below as well. All right, coming in at only 20 bucks, this is the Home Security T 
TV simulator. Now, while this is hilariously cheap feeling, it does have a 20 LED light panel to mix colors together to simulate that someone's home watching TV. So it does have three settings. Uh, the first setting is dusk plus four hours. Uh, the blue LED turns on to indicate what setting mode it's in. And once the light sensor on the top detects that it's gotten dark enough, it'll switch on the TV simulator mode, start playing a bunch of colors for four hours straight, and then turn off automatically. And it'll do the same thing when you switch over to dusk plus eight hours. Or if you want, you can turn on TV simulator mode right from the get-go, and that'll stay on for as long as you want, and it'll eventually start flashing a bunch of different colors. Keep these away from people with epilepsy. I don't know, it's a TV simulator, I thought it was neat. Well, I think that about does for this one. Uh, drop me a comment down below and let me know which product was your favorite. If you liked the video, show me some love and hit up that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll talk to you on the next one. How do you can?